page spread graphic. And this is super easy. It's basically, um, you wanna make these pages look like they are actual pages and not just images that are flat overlapping. So we're just gonna add a drop shadow to them. And <laughs> it's funny because when I was doing this before, I didn't realize that there was a quick shortcut for it because of course there is, it's Photoshop. So <laughs> I'm going to take advantage of that. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your uh, files that you are bringing in are the size that you want them to be. If this was like a square image, I wouldn't have this border where it would look like more of a portrait. So I wanna make sure of that first. So I'm gonna drag this over and I'm gonna resize it so that it is about the, you know, about here, cause I'm gonna have a four page spread here. And then the other thing I wanna do is just slightly tilt it. And so that's going to make a fan effect to where they are all kind of spread out. And you can, of course, go back and adjust this later. Um, but that's what I think I'll start with. And then I want to bring my carrots in. And same thing, I'm just going to adjust that to about the same size. I want this to be the um, image that's kind of on front. So like, see how they're going to be uh, staggered like this. I am going to make sure that this one is the very last one. So you can do that by dragging your layer order. Um, I'm kind of just throwing these in here because this is how I would do it with my workflow anyway. And that way, if this is the way that you end up doing it, you're not confused as to how to get them, you know, in the back versus the front. So I'm going to tilt this a little bit and then I'm going to put it behind um, by just taking that layer, dragging it beneath the carrot layer and then you can see it's behind there. One thing I do want to make sure of is that they are spread out enough to where this is probably something you're going to do at the very end after you add your shadows, but you want to make sure you can see what's going on underneath. And then the last one I'm putting in is a tomato. And I'm going to resize that so you can see this is underneath some layers. So this is kind of tricky. You can definitely work more organized than me, but the idea is to get them in here, get them um, sized where you want them, and then get them in the order you want them. So this doesn't look right. If you were to just put this in here, this would not be the ideal situation. So we're just going to add a drop shadow really quickly, and I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to start with my carrots layer so that you can see where the overlap should go. Select the um, FX, and then you're going to go to drop shadow right here. Now, when you first open this up, you're gonna see this box that pops up and you can see that it kind of has its, it has its own settings. And so I wanna make sure that my settings, I want my drop shadow to focus mostly on the left side since that's the page that it's covering. So I'm gonna change the angle and make the light source go up in this top right of the circle. And then you can see the shadow will then focus on the left and bottom. You can also adjust the distance of you know how far it goes out and then the spread and then also the size and the size is going to make it more and more blurry um so i'm going to make the distance go a little bit further because i want it to this is also going to make it look like it's kind of hovering so you want to be careful about how much you apply that so i just basically want the spread to be you know light enough to where you can see that it is a separate page. Um, I don't want it to be too much shadow on the top right. So make sure that your distance is correct. And the nice thing is, as soon as I press OK, it's going to remember those settings. So now all I have to do is just go to each individual layer, go to FX, go to drop shadow, and it automatically remembers everything I just did. And then I say OK. I'm going to go to my broccoli layer, go to FX, Drop shadow, same thing, just say okay. And then lastly, click tomato, FX, drop shadow, and okay. And now you can see I have these pages, these sizes are all messed up and everything. And that's because I couldn't see what was going on before. Um, so that's why it's nice to make these final arrangements that you need to do uh, at the end here, whoops, so that you have more control. So I'm just gonna move these. The nice thing about this too is you don't have any under under like layers that have like some sort of Gaussian blur or something like that, that you also have to worry about moving around because everything is just an effect that is directly 
um, affecting each each layer, each piece that I put in. So it's technically only four main layers. So see, now I have this page spread and it looks awesome. So all I wanna do now is change the background color, which you totally don't have to do, I'm going to. Um, here's how I do it. So yeah, you can go to background, you can select your paintbrush tool and you can change it. But I'm gonna undo that and I'm actually gonna go to this little circle icon that has a, um, the part of its dark, part of its light in the bottom right. I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna say solid color. That is making a layer on top um, and it's making that color be a solid layer color. It also brings up this box. And when that happens, I can change the color in real time. So that helps me a lot. So like, you know, as I drag this around, I can see how that is going to work with my piece. So like, you know, I might like this, but I'm like, no, I want it to be a little more of a blue green. And I can just kind of drag that around until I find the perfect shade instead of having to go and select the color and then paint and select the color and then paint. So um, I think I'm happy with this one. I'm gonna say okay, and then I can just save it. And that is it. So I hope that this is super helpful. Be sure to no turn notifications on for more tutorials. Subscribe and check out my website, thepigeonletters.com. I've got lots of freebies for you guys. I'll see you next time.